I said, everybody, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are going to pray together now as we begin. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. we thank you, Father, because we know you have brought us in here for a great, great thing to be given to everyone. Lord, I'm praying today you'll inject us with your power. Amen. Inject us with your wisdom. Amen. Inject us with divine energy. Amen. That we will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Amen. As a result of our fellowship together, as a result of our sharing together, Lord, I pray you'll take your people to the top of the mountain in their profession, their career, in their ministry, in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever needs to be corrected in our lives, correct everything. Amen. And whatever unction, anointing, and power we need, give us everything we need in Jesus' name. Amen. That this work of the Lord will prosper in our hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before you sit down, give me another amen. amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated now. I told you yesterday that we're going through a series. And as we're going through the series, I told you number one about the man. is the man that makes a minister. When the Lord takes you as a man, and then he starts from the point where you are to take you to the point where you ought to be actually it's a process when jesus christ said follow me and i will make you fishers of men number one he wants to make you but first of all he melts you down because if he doesn't melt you down the way you are and the things of acquired since you came into the world or even into the ministry you might not be able to reach the level and the height is taking you to number two he molds you number one he melts you melts you spirit of the living god mold me melt me feel me he melts you and then he molds you then number three he makes your life you will see that as go on in the ministry he takes the man and then he begins to mend him he begins to put this right and put this straight and then while he makes you he continues to monitor you you see in our lives as ministers and as men he doesn't just leave us alone and say i've delegated everything to your hand you can do whatever you want now he monitors you he monitors you as he monitors you he says i still need to do this in your life i still need to perfect this in your life and then he mentors you he mentors you he becomes your mentor and is the one that is building you up and then in the process of mentoring you he matures you matures you you come into maturity the man without the man you cannot have a ministry it is the man that makes up the ministry and i told you yesterday he chooses us he chooses us then he charges and challenges us and then i told you number two yesterday the privilege of ministry and in the privilege of ministry we're coming to the ministry and what a great privilege that is as we come to the lord because the lord could have chosen a thousand other people that's why the lord jesus christ said if these keep quiet he can choose another set of ministers and raise up a stone and therefore if you are there if i am there it's a privilege do you remember when god called moses and said moses look at all these children of israel they think i cannot do without them now let me destroy them and i will make of you a greater nation than they but if the lord has not made a greater nation than us and he has not chosen more effective and better ministers than us is giving us a privilege that's why i told you the privilege of serving god today i continue in the series and i'm talking to you today on the indispensable qualities in christian leadership the indispensable qualities of christian leadership or christian leaders when we say something is indispensable that means that thing is important that thing is very important and it is something you cannot do without talents are great 
but there's something greater than talent. Gifts are great, and there's something greater than gifts. To have knowledge, what a wonderful, beautiful thing it is to have knowledge. And yet, there's something that is greater than knowledge. Faith is wonderful. And yet, there's something we still need to have in line, in conjunction with that faith. When we talk about indispensable qualities, we're talking about something that if you don't have it, all the other things you have that might be good in themselves, they lose value. And they lose importance and they lose their worth they lose their authority and their power that's why we're looking at this message this time the indispensable qualities in christian leadership in acts of the apostles chapter 13 acts chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 22 acts 13 verse 22 and when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony, and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. As you look at the testimony of God concerning David, you begin to ask yourself, are there so many ministers, are there so many people in the Bible that God gave testimony about? Well, say no, there were not many of them, just a few of them. For example, Moses. The Lord gave testimony concerning Moses, he said, Moses, my servant, is not so. It's not like any of the others. And when you come to the place in your life, you come to the place in your family, you come to the place in your ministry, when the Almighty God himself can give testimony concerning you and say, so and so, I've raised him up. I've appointed him. And I've accepted him. I have put him in place that he will do what I've called him to do. And he is not like all the people. That's greater than the media giving testimony about you. That's greater than members of your family giving testimony about you. And that is greater than the people in your community giving testimony about you. When the almighty God himself, when he gives testimony about you. Here yeah, we find the case of, of uh, David. And then you find a man like Daniel that God himself gave testimony about while he was praying God sent an angel from heaven and he said Daniel a man greatly beloved he said among us angels in heaven whenever your name comes up you are greatly beloved not just by men here on earth you are greatly beloved even of those angels and the moment you started praying the heavenly father god almighty sent me to you to give you an answer to your prayer what a great privilege that is when god can give testimony concerning us and here comes the greatest of them all and the one that stands in a unique place that no other person can occupy our lord jesus christ he appeared at jordan and then just saw, saw him coming and john said you are coming to me to baptize you in water i shall be coming to you to baptize me with the holy ghost and fire and jesus said let's leave it like this because we have to fulfill all righteousness that's the testimony already concerning jesus christ from john but then he went into the river of baptism by immersion and then as he came up the heavens opened and then a voice came from heaven the voice of the father here is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased watch a testimony and if you could have a testimony coming from heaven if you could have a testimony by the spirit of god saying he has appointed you and that you have what it takes to succeed in the ministry what a testimony that will be now we're coming back to david for david we're looking at acts chapter 13 verse 22 and when he had removed saul god raised up unto them david to be their king to whom also the almighty god he gave testimony and said i have found david i have found david it's like god himself was searching 
It's like he looked into every tribe of the children of Israel. And then he got to the tribe of Judah. And then he looked into all the families making of the tribe of Judah. And he found the family of Jesse. And then he looked at all the children of Jesse. And then he got David and he said, I've got him. I've got somebody. And with I in him and he abiding in me i can turn everything in israel the right direction when god can say i have found i have found this man i have found this woman and with him with her abiding in me and with my word abiding in him we can turn this tribe this stage and this nation we can turn this nation in the right direction i found the man I found the man. The question is, can God testify about you that he has found you? And what qualification, what testimony, and what attribute did this man have? I found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. A man after my own heart. Whatever other qualities he had, those are just appendages. Those are just extras. The real thing, the important thing, the indispensable thing, the non-negotiable in his life is that he was a man at a God's own heart which shall fulfill all my will. He'll fulfill all my will. And that's what the Lord is bringing to you today. That you will so yield yourself to the Lord and you will so surrender yourself to the Lord that God will be able to trust you. And he'll be able to say, yes, that is the man. Yes, that is the woman. He will fulfill all my will. Verse 36. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God. After he had served his own generation by the will of God. He fell on sleep. He died and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption that means the body decayed and so today as we look at that text and we're looking at the fact that there are some indispensable qualities that we need to possess in our lives that will make us successful in the ministry i bring three aspects of these indispensable qualities to you number one integrity and transparency in christian leaders integrity and transparency in christian leaders number two influence and trust influence and trust in christian leaders influence and trust in christian leaders number three intercession and travail intercession and travail in Christian leaders. Intercession and travail in Christian leaders. Let's come to number one. We're looking at integrity and transparency in Christian leaders. As you look at First Kings chapter 9. First Kings chapter 9. When we're leaders, and remember being a leader does not mean just being a pastor. A pastor is a leader. A teacher of the word of God is a leader. In fact, a mother is a leader over the children, training, bringing up those children. A father in the family is a leader in that little circle of the family. That's a leader right there. A teacher in the school is a leader over those children that is teaching. And if you are a professional, you are a director, you are a leader, or you are a manager over the people that you are leading, over the people that you are helping to function well in the way they ought to function, you are a leader. And so when I say in Christian leaders, I mean virtually everyone. If you have some people around you, some people who are subordinate to you some people who are answerable to you in the place where you are working that's leadership you're already a leader and what will make you successful and what will make you to be the man the minister the leader god has called you to be is that you have 
Number one, integrity. And on the other side of the coin is transparency. Actually, you cannot separate them. It's like when you have a coin in your hand. It has a tail, it has a head. And both sides make up the coin. And the same thing. If you're going to be a successful leader, a leader that will fulfill the totality of the will of God, you need, on the one hand, integrity. On the other hand, you need transparency. In 1 Kings chapter 9, reading from verse 4, And if thou wilt walk before me, as David thy father walked in the integrity of heart, and in uprightness to do according to all that I have commanded thee and will keep my statutes and my judgments then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever as I promised to David thy father saying there shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel if you look at verse 4 and it says if thou wilt walk before me how do you understand that the way i understand it is this look up here it's like every time you picture in your mind that god is there and actually god is there because god is everywhere present but you see many times we do not work in the knowledge of the presence of the lord omnipresence of god but if you come back to scripture and you know that god is here when you're in the village, God is there. When the members of your church are not there, God is there. When the brethren who know you and may observe you, when they are not there, God is there. And then it says, if you walk before me, that means you are walking before the Lord. You are walking in the presence of the Lord. Everything you do, everything you say, everywhere you go, it is in the presence of the Lord. And you say, God is here. God is here. Although people may not be here, and although the people that know me may not be there, the Almighty God is here. And He sees my intention. And He sees my action. And He sees my attitude. And He sees my motive. And He sees my activity. And He sees and He judges everything I do. And I want to do everything according to His will. And according to his word and because you are walking before the lord all the time that's integrity and whatever you don't want god to know you will not do whatever you don't want god to see you will not perform if you will walk before me in the integrity of your heart in the uprightness of your life and you will do according to all that i have commanded thee that's integrity when you say, I've discovered the commandments of God, and I've made up my mind, I will do according to all that the Lord has commanded me. That's the integrity. Therefore, I'm calling you to a decision today that you say, Lord, I know what you want me to do. To picture that you are before me, or you are ahead of me, or you are in front of me every time. And you are watching, and you are looking at everything that I do. And I want to do everything to please you. That's integrity. When you make up your mind and say, today, today, I'm making up my mind every step I take. Every decision I take. Everything I say. Every association I form. And every ministry I perform is going to be in the very presence of the Lord to do according to all that he has commanded me. Then he tells us in verse 6, But if ye shall at all turn from following me, and ye or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve all the gods, and worship them then will i cut off israel out of the land which i have given them and this house which i have hallowed for my name will i cast out of my sight and israel shall be approved and a by word among all people and so we understand that the lord wants us to have integrity actually that word integrity is uh, associated with the word integral integral is a whole number an integral number a whole number a complete number a total number a perfect number that means there is no fraction you are taking of 
You are bringing the totality of your mind, the totality of your soul, the totality of your energy, the totality of your intelligence, the totality of your skill, the totality of the goodness of God within you. You are bringing it to the service of the Lord in your character and in your activity, in everything that you do. That totality that completeness and that round figure that you have that the lord has given you presenting to the lord that's integrity integrity and you serve the lord in the integrity of your heart in some 78 some 78 i'm reading to you from verse 70 some 78 verse 70 and he chose david also a servant and took him from the sheep poles from following the youth, great was young. He brought him to feed Jacob, his people, and Israel, his inheritance. So he fed them, listen to this, according, according, according to the integrity of his heart. According to the integrity of his heart. That means according to the character, holiness, uprightness righteousness coming out of his heart according to the integrity of his heart and he guided them by the skillfulness of his hands i told you that god also built bought his testimony concerning moses and we read in hebrews chapter 3 from verse 1 hebrews chapter 3 reading from verse 1 wherefore holy brethren Partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house, as Moses was faithful in all his house, the faithfulness in everything, faithfulness in small things, Faithfulness in big things. Faithfulness at the beginning. Faithfulness at the middle age. And faithfulness till old age. And faithfulness to every judge and teacher of what the Lord has commanded. That totality of heart. That impeccable character that makes you to bring the totality of faithfulness to God in everything, at all times, before all people, in all places. That's the integrity. And that's the testimony that Almighty God had concerning Moses that was faithful in all his house. But this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses. Talking about Jesus now, in as much as he who has built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is builded by some man, but he that built all things is God. And Moses verily, and Moses certainly, and Moses assuredly, and Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken of after. As a testimony of those things which were to be spoken at her. And so, if it was possible for Moses to be faithful, faithful at all times, faithful in all things, faithful in all situations, and faithful in every calling, and faithful at every time of challenge, faithful in the little things and in the great things, faithful in the minor and faithful in the major if it was possible for moses a man of like passions like you and i if it was possible for that man he was surrounded by people that didn't fully support him didn't fully help him and didn't fully accept everything he said and yet instead of looking at them and being distracted he was looking at the almighty god and he said i know the one who has called me and it was possible for him to be faithful and so the same challenge is coming to you and coming to me that that man of like passions as you and i he was faithful you too can be faithful i said you too can be faithful and we're going to be faithful in jesus name this man moses as a servant for a testimony 
of those things which shall be spoken after faithful in all things and i come to you today to tell you all that god is expecting from you is that in everything he tells you to do in everything he appoints you to do in everything he has commissioned into your hand that he'll find you to be faithful you'll be faithful in jesus name integrity when somebody has integrity what are the things associated with integrity number one honesty honesty if you have integrity you'll be honest you'll be honest you'll be honest to yourself you'll be honest to members of your family you'll be honest to members of the church you will be honest to everyone around you'll be honest even to strangers you will be a man of honesty a woman of honesty number two truthfulness truthfulness you see integrity goes along with truthfulness you're truthful and there is no reason to tell any lie anytime and there's no reason to tell lies to members of the church or to the whole church in general or to tell lies while you are preaching if you have integrity you tell it exactly as it is at all times in all places number three trustworthiness trustworthiness you will do things that will make people to trust you and if they hear anything about you anything concerning you outside they say no i don't think he can do that because i know that man is trustworthy his life the tenor of his life and the way he projects himself and everything that he has done since we knew him and since we've been working with him we know he cannot do that because it's a trustworthy man or she is a trustworthy woman number four single-mindedness a focused man a man that has one direction and that direction is the will of god he has discovered the will of god and because he has discovered the will of god he goes in that direction only the direction of the will of god single-mindedness and he has high principles high principles and he doesn't change his principles as he goes from place to place as he interacts with person to person with different people he remains a man that has single-mindedness with high principles number five faithfulness faithfulness that goes along with integrity then number six innocence you're innocent innocent you're purified in your heart you are purified in your life and you do not live by double standard you are innocent of any crime of any evil number seven transparency transparency that means we can see through there is nothing covered there is nothing that you know people should not know this people should not see this you are transparent we're looking at daniel chapter six daniel chapter six i'm reading from verse one it pleased the reals to search over the kingdom a hundred and twenty princes which should be over the whole kingdom and over these three princes of whom daniel was first was preferred that's because the man had integrity that's because the man had transparency he was preferred above everybody else that the princes might give accounts unto them and the king should have no damage no hurt then this daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes because an excellent spirit was found was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm that's what the lord is expecting that the lord himself will support you the lord then will know because you are innocent because you have integrity because you have transparency and there is nothing no fault anybody can find in your character then the lord himself will promote you i said the lord will promote you 
in verse 4 it says then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against daniel concerning the kingdom but they could find none occasion nor fault for as much as he was faithful and neither was there any error or fault found in him then said these men we shall not find any occasion against this daniel we don't know about another daniel but this one this daniel we cannot find an occasion against this daniel for as much as he was faithful except we find it against him concerning the law of his god i come to point number two point number two influence and trust of christian leaders the influence and the trust of christian leaders when we are leaders leadership is about influence number one integrity number two influence number one transparency number two trust if you are a leader people should be able to trust you if you are a leader you should have influence over people let me tell you once again that we are all leaders in our various capacities of ministry i told you a mother is a leader and a mother has influence on children a father is a leader and a father has tremendous influence on his family a teacher a school teacher is a leader and the teacher has great influence upon those children upon the students how many of us here will say today the career in which i am now actually was because of my teacher was because of my teacher any of us could say that that teacher had a great influence on me another person will say where i am today what i am doing today is as a result of the influence of my school principal in my formative years that man had a great tremendous influence on us that's what i'm saying the principal of a school or the teacher in a class has tremendous influence and is a great leader and then when you come into life and you're working in a company you're working in a factory you're working in an institution in that institution you're a leader there and if you're a christian you're a christian leader and now when you come to the church and then people are there together whether you're evangelist bringing people to the kingdom of god or you are a pastor and you're shepherding the people and you're leading the people and you're feeding the people with the word of god you have tremendous influence over the people a leader is an influencer that is somebody who influences other people the influence of a christian leader and the trust of a christian leader and let's look at uh, joshua chapter 11 verse 15 joshua chapter 11 verse 15 as the lord commanded moses a servant so did moses command joshua and so did joshua he left nothing undone of all that the lord commanded moses moses was a great influence that's why i would say he's a leader i think about it now moses had influence on joshua and by very definition and description when you are a man of influence you're a leader Moses didn't only have influence on Joshua, Moses had influence on Aaron, the high priest, and the Levites, the priests. And those priests were responsible for the work of the Lord in the tabernacle for the children of Israel going to the land of Canaan. That man was a great influence. He had an influence over the Levites. Not only that, he had an influence over the whole of the children of Israel. That's leadership. That's leadership. When you have influence, you are a leader. And not only that, by writing Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the, Moses had influence over the generations after him, even after he had died because all the kings of israel they were supposed to take those books of the law and they were supposed to read and they were to guide everything they did by the law of moses that is leadership that the man had influence that outlived him 
that he even after he had died and he had gone home to glory the books he wrote and the scriptures that the lord made him to write was still influencing and directing and controlling the people of israel even when you come to the new testament jesus christ said i have not come to destroy the law i have come to fulfill the law what do you think about Moses then? What he wrote in the law? It was still having influence to the time of Jesus. And then Paul the Apostle came. And Paul the Apostle tells us that everything now is summarized. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind. And then you love your neighbor as yourself. He that loveth has fulfilled the law. You still could not set aside what Moses wrote even at the time of Paul the Apostle. That's influence. And when you make up your mind today, I will be a man of influence. You are saying I will be a leader. I will be a woman of influence. I will be a leader so that your word will still carry power, authority, and influence over people even long after you had gone. As Moses was an influencer, that he is a man that influenced others. So Joshua was also a man of influence. In Joshua chapter 24 verse 31, Joshua chapter 24, I'm reading verse 31. And Israel searched the Lord all the days of Joshua. And Israel searched the Lord all the days of Joshua. Israel as a nation, in all their 12 tribes, with the millions of people that got to the land of Canaan, they said, we cannot worship idol. Why? Look at Joshua. Look at Eder. Is influencing us, is pointing us in the right direction. That's leadership. And when in your leadership, the people that are with you, and the people that you are teaching, and the people that you are instructing, and the people that are following you, they can say, We cannot worship idol. Our teacher, our leader, our pastor has taught us so well and has shown us the power. And the grace of God wherewith will be able to live the victorious life. That's leadership. When you have influence on people. It says in verse 31. And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua. And all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua. He had trained other people. As he trained them, after he was gone, the people he trained, they were also influencing them. And he says, which had known all the works of the Lord, which he had done for Israel. You'll be a man of influence. Amen. And you will be a man of lasting influence in Jesus' name. Amen. When your influence goes beyond you, and even after you have gone, the influence is still there. When I say after you have gone, maybe you have not gone from the world. But let's take, for example, a teacher. A teacher was teaching in the primary school. And all those children just loved him. And then they, they, they were the very best. Some of them even said, I'm going to be my best. I'll not disappoint our school teacher, our class teacher. And then the influence of that teacher over them, over those children, is so tremendous because he's a leader. And then that teacher goes to school, maybe to go and take a degree, and he has left that school. And even though the teacher has left, those children, when they get back to the secondary school, every teacher that teaches them in the secondary school, they'll compare with the teacher who taught them in the primary school. They'll say, I like this teacher. This teacher is like my teacher in that primary school. That primary school teacher becomes a point of reference. That's an influence. That's a leader. And then when somebody comes to the class in the secondary school and it's not uh, teaching them like that other teacher, uh, the students will say, this one, this teacher, I don't like this one. It's not teaching us like that, my teacher in the primary school. The teacher in that primary school, although it's no more with them, is the point of reference. And it's an influence. And that's what I'm telling you that you will know that you are a leader. That the people you are leading, even after you have left them, or they have left you, the influence will continue upon them. I pray that your influence will continue. Amen. And will live beyond the moment of the day. And your influence will be positive, having impact on the lives of different people in Jesus' name. Amen. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 13. Acts, chapter 4, verse 13. 
Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And that verse is very significant. These people were enemies of the gospel, and they saw Peter and John. These people did not even believe in Jesus when Jesus was on earth. And yet, they now commented. They were looking at Peter and John. And they saw their boldness. And they saw their courage. And they saw their conviction. And they saw the way they were standing on the truth. And then they began to look at one another. Although we didn't believe in Jesus and we still don't believe in Jesus, Jesus has a great influence. These are the kind of boldness that Jesus demonstrated. These are the kind of conviction that Jesus demonstrated. When they saw the boldness and the courage of Peter and John, they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. That is influence. Now, when a leader has influence, how do you know that in his life? Let me tell you, I want to spell out for you this word, influence influence i n f l u e n c e why are you spelling it don't you know we know it of course i know you know it i'm just uh, spelling it for you so that you see that my spelling is same as your own spelling that even though we are coming from different directions different uh, parts of the country we still spell that thing the same way influence is influence whether you're in lagos or in calabar Praise the Lord. Put your hands together. Influence. And I spell that influence for you. I, a man of influence, inspires people. Inspires people. You see, when you are a man of influence, you will inspire people. How do you inspire people? They want to do like you are doing. You see, the child, the child, the father has influence on him. And the father is walking. And therefore, when the father puts up his shoe, the child will put the leg, it will put the foot in the shoe. And say, and then be carrying the shoe of the father and say, Daddy, Daddy, look at me. I'm walking like you. That man is a great influence on that child. That child is looking at that father. I want to be like this father. I want to wear his shoe. I want to dress like him. I want to walk like him. That's an influence. When you inspire people to do what you are doing, then that's a great influence. If you are a teacher, and the students in your class are saying, when I grow up, I'll never be a teacher in my life. This man is not happy. This man is not satisfied. This man is suffering. This man is teaching because he doesn't have any other work to do. When I grow up, I'll never be a teacher in my life. That man doesn't have influence. But when you're a teacher and the students are saying, you know, they, they get back home and your, their parents say, have you chosen your career? Yes, I've chosen. What are you going to do? I'm going to be a teacher. Why don't you be a doctor? No, I'm going to be a teacher. Why? I just like my teacher and if I can just be as happy as he is and do what he does and be satisfied as he's satisfied, that's what I want to do in my life. That's a great influence. A man, a woman, a minister of influence, number one, inspires people and networks with people. He networks with people. There is no isolated man, isolated minister that will have a great influence. Your influence will not go beyond your little circle that you draw around your feet. If you're an isolated man, isolated woman, isolated minister, a man of influence, a minister of influence, networks with people. And then if a leader of influence focuses on progress, he focuses on progress. I dare tell you, no matter where you are, there are always problems there. Always problems there. Always problems there. But a man of influence does not focus on problems. A man of influence focuses on progress. You see, see where we're coming from. 
and see the long distance we have traveled already and see the progress that we have made if we keep on doing what we have been doing that gave us this progress then we will have greater progress ahead of us that's a man of influence you are not thinking and you are not bothering yourself about the problems of the day but you are so happy because of the progress you have made and you focus on progress L a man of influence, a minister of influence, leads people to their full potential. A man of influence leads people to their full potential. A man, uh, he was a great artist, Michelangelo. And this uh, great artist brought, bought a block of marble. But that marble did not have any shape at all all the other artists they had seen that marble and they were also coming out in their own corner some images or some pictures i'm sure you've seen that sometimes on your street you see the image of a particular personality carved out and this michelangelo he took a block of marble and then they asked him what are you going to do with this because this one is shapeless it has nothing inside it and then michelangelo said something very instructive he said there is an angel inside that despised marble i want to release i want to bring out and then he carved it and carved it and carved it and chiseled up a lot of things and then an angel came out and he said yes this is a good artist this is a good cover because he carved out he brought an angel out of that useless worthless marble that's a man of influence when you bring out the angel in him and you bring out an angel in her and you bring out an angel in him what i mean is this in every man there is understand my language in every man there is a judas and there is at the same time a john in every man there is a bright side of every man there is a dark side of every man and then they give the man to you they say take care of this man whatever you do to that man will bring out either the judas in him or the john in him you can do something to that man that you don't recognize the judas in him you don't recognize the negative sin in him and you starve the judas in him to death and you keep on feeding the john in him and you keep on encouraging the john in him and you keep on developing the john in him and you keep on paying attention to the john in him and when you do that john will come out and you will see that this is a good man is just a man like the other man why is the other man so bad because the other people who are training him they are bringing out the judas in him they're saying you are a traitor they're saying you are rebellious they're saying you are disobedient they're saying you are wicked they're saying you are evil and true true as they say he's wicked and there's judas inside him and we are not feeding the john inside him we stab the john inside him to death and as he comes out didn't i tell you it's a wicked man see what he has done didn't i tell you it's a rebellious man see what he has done you are the cause you said it's judas and so he shows you okay i'm judas all right i am judas and you say that you you are a traitor in this our church you are the one that will destroy this church. I, I will just okay i will do it for you and they destroy it for you but if you stab the judas in them today the john in them will come out yeah. be a man of influence and you will focus on progress and you will lead people to their full potential you you now utilizes privileges profitably utilizes privileges profitably uh, you know somebody one person has only 10,000 naira another person has 10,000 naira and the fellow that utilizes privileges profitably he takes the 10,000 naira and then he becomes the greatest and the richest trader in our community the other one is still looking at 10,000 naira what am i going to do with this one this one is nothing i'm waiting for a larger amount a leader will start where he is and he will utilize the privilege and the resources and the money and whatever he has he utilizes it profitably he, he empathizes 
sympathizes with people empathizes with people that means it's sim it's in sympathy with people he is considerate with people he puts himself in their shoes and he negotiates for profit he negotiates for profit anything that he's doing he says i want my ministry to be profited i want my ministry to progress and therefore everything he does he negotiates for profits and then see he connects people with people and he connects people with possibilities he connects people with possibilities that's an influencer a man that is influencing other people he looks at you and he says my brother you should be higher than where you're sitting come on here he will link that person with the possibility over here and then he he exceeds past performances he exceeds past performances if you're an influencer and you're influencing other people today you are performing at a higher level than you performed yesterday you'll be a man of influence yeah. i come to point number three intercession and travail of christian leaders intercession and travail of christian leaders the lord wants us to intercede he tells us in ezekiel chapter 22 Ezekiel chapter 22 I'm reading verse 30 Ezekiel 22 verse 30 here it tells us and I sought for a man among them that should make up the edge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it but I found none the Lord says he's looking for intercessor and a leader will be an intercessor a man that will take the needs of other people and take them to God. A man that will take the problems of other people and take them to God. A man that will take the judgment of other people in his heart. And as a burden, because the Lord is saying, I'm going to reject these people. I'm going to write off these people. I'm going to destroy these people. And I will make of you a greater nation. He takes that judgment on his heart and then he goes to the Lord in prayer. And the Lord says, I sought for a man that will make up the edge and that will stand in the gap so that they will stand in the gap and they will hold onto the house of the altar praying for these people that are under the judgment of God that the judgment of God shall not fall upon them. That's the intercessor. And the Lord says, I'm seeking for such intercessors. In the case of the time, at the time of Ezekiel, he did not find the right man that will stand in the gap, that will make up the edge, and that will pray for the people so that the judgment will not come upon them. Isaiah chapter 59. In Isaiah chapter 59. Well, reading from verse 16. Isaiah 59, verse 16. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor he saw that there was no man and he wondered that there was no intercessor preachers there are many evangelists there are many and other people that do many other things and there are many but for intercessors he wants the leader to be an intercessor and he wondered he was surprised that among all the people with all the things they were involved in there was no intercessor among them i pray that today the lord will raise up intercessors among us in jesus name if we're going to be leaders like moses we will intercede if we're going to be leaders like daniel we will intercede if we're going to be leaders like the lord jesus christ we will intercede if we're going to be leaders like the apostles of the lord in the acts of the apostles we will intercede because intercession is very important in the ministry of christian leaders instead of complaining about your people why don't you intercede for them instead of complaining about members of your family why don't you intercede for the members of the family and instead of grumbling and murmuring and complaining about your pastor, why don't you intercede and pray for him and pray for his family? I know you do in your church, but I'm talking about in your closet, in a secret place, in your own house, 
you enter into your chamber and you pray and the burden and the shortcomings you see and the things that bother you about the ministry of that man you take it to the lord in prayer the lord is looking for intercessors and here he said he didn't find any so it surprised him we can learn a lot from daniel we can learn a lot from the intercessory ministry of Daniel. That Daniel, when he read the scriptures from the book of Jeremiah, and he knew what the Lord had decided, predicted in prophecy concerning the people of Israel, he knew it wasn't something just to talk about. It wasn't something just to discuss. He knew it was something to take to the Lord in prayer. Intercession must be part of the ministry of the Christian leader. Look at Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. I'm reading to you from verse 1. Daniel chapter 9. Reading from verse 1. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the siege of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. And I search my face unto the Lord God, to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. That's intercession. He said, I looked at the book of Jeremiah and I saw what the Lord had predicted concerning the children of Israel. Actually, what Jeremiah prophesied is that because of the disobedience and the rebellion and the sin, the iniquity of Jerusalem and Judah, the people of God, that they will go into captivity and they will spend 70 years there. A false prophet, if you look at Jeremiah chapter 28, you don't look at it, not later, you can look at that. A false prophet came and said, No, not 70 years, within two years, all the captivity will be over. And then Jeremiah came and said, But you are deceiving the people. And then Jeremiah had a wooden yoke on his neck to demonstrate and to illustrate how the people of Israel, they will go into captivity for 70 years. And this false prophet took the yoke away and broke it. And then Jeremiah said, you are a deceiver, Ananias. You have broken the yoke of wood and you have fashioned and formed and made manufactured a yoke of iron for these people. And true to prophecy, the children of Israel went, people of Judah went into captivity. And now Daniel had been calculating. They came to captivity at this particular year. Seventy years had been accomplished. And then he said, Lord, what well, was supposed to be here seventy years. When are you going to bring deliverance to your people? That's why he began to pray. He began to intercede. And you read the scripture, you read the word of God, and on the basis of the prophecy and the prediction and the promise and the precept of the word of God, you take everything to the Lord in prayer. That's intercession. It tells us now in verse 3, I search my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and by supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and the dreadful God, keeping covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. That's the prayer he prayed. He tells us, look at verse 16, O Lord, according to thy righteousness, I beseech thee, he was praying, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city Jerusalem that thy holy mountain be caused for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem, and thy people have become a reproach to all that are about us. Now therefore, there's a man that knew how to get God's attention. A man that knew how to use intercession to deliver the people of God. Now therefore, our God, hear the, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplication and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake 
O oh my God, incline thine ear and hear and open thine eyes and behold our desolations and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercies. He was telling the Lord, we have nothing to recommend us before you, as if we were righteous people, we were sinful people, and we are filled with iniquity. But, O oh Lord, we come to you, we want you to please release your people from their captivity. Intercession, a leader must be an intercessor. A person that has the concern of the people at heart must take their problems to the Lord, must take their judgments to the Lord, must take their predicaments to the Lord, and then resume in prayer on their behalf. In verse 19, O Lord, hear, O Lord, forgive, O Lord, how can and do? Be far not for thine own sake, O my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. Then in verse 20, and whilst I was speaking and praying, and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God yea whilst I was speaking in prayer in intercession in supplication while I was speaking in prayer even the man Gabriel does an angel whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning being caused to fly swiftly touch me about the time of the evening sacrifice evening oblation and he informed me and he talked with me and he said oh daniel i am now come forth to give this skill and understanding at the beginning of their supplications the commandment came forth and i am come to show thee for thou art greatly beloved therefore understand the matter and consider the vision eventually the lord promised him there's going to be deliverance for the people of israel as you come to the New Testament, we'll find the leaders of the New Testament were intercessors in Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. My prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved in romans chapter 8 verse 26 likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities for we know not what we shall pray for as we ought but the spirit is that maketh intercession for us with groanings that which cannot be uttered that is when you are bodied for the sins of the people for the suffering of the people, for the sickness of the people, for the problems of the people. You groan, you are deep in prayer, bringing the burden and the judgment of the people in the sight of the Lord. And then it says in verse 27, And he that searches the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. He maketh intercession. He lives within us. He grows within us. He prays through us. He releases the burden through us, making intercession with groanings which cannot be altered. Verse 34, who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. He also maketh intercession for us. That means then, that even Christ now has not stopped the ministry of intercession. It's at the right hand of the Father, and is still making intercession for us. And if Christ lives within us, is Christ who intercedes and he will intercede through us if the spirit of the living God the Holy Ghost lives within us he is the spirit of intercession he intercedes through us that means then if we are leaders and we want to actually be who we are called to be then we're going to really intercede we're looking at Isaiah chapter 53 verses 11 and 12 Isaiah Chapter 53, I'm reading from verse 11. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied 
by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities therefore will i divide him a portion with the great he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he has poured out his soul unto death he was numbered with the transgressors and he bear the sins of many and he made intercession he made intercession he made intercession for the transgressors and so christ is known as intercessor and if we are servants of the lord and we are thank god we are we're going to also have that same ministry of the lord jesus christ and we have intercession intercession and travail isaiah chapter 66 in isaiah chapter 66 we're looking at verse 8 isaiah chapter 66 verse 8 who has heard such a thing who has seen such things shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day or shall a nation be born at once for as soon as zion travailed she brought forth her children if you have not been having enough or you've not been seeing enough fruit enough progress and enough conversion enough growth in your church here is something for you that you will intercede as soon as zion travailed he brought forth children when you intercede as a minister when you intercede for your family when you intercede as a christian leader what are you interceding for number one restoration restoration are there backsliders in the fellowship are there those who have gone away from the lord you are interceding then number one for restoration number two for regeneration there are people that have not even been born again at all and you know that they are hanging around the church or maybe they are coming to the church they are members of the church but they are not in christ they have not been born again and you are interceding number two for regeneration that many people will be born again many people will be turned to the lord they turn away from their sins and they turn to the lord and then the grace of god that brings salvation will appear unto them and the lord will turn their lives around they become new creatures in christ number three revelation when we are being in a denomination and then you by the grace of god you have discovered the knowledge of the lord you have discovered salvation in christ you have discovered healing for the sick you have discovered deliverance for the oppressed you have discovered sanctification and holiness for the people that come to know the lord you have discovered the possibility of having the power of the holy ghost and then your denomination your church they do not have that revelation and you're interceding for that church you're interceding for that church abandoning that church that's not the answer quitting the church that's not the answer running away from the church that's not the answer but for somebody in that church who knows that that church needs a revelation of the deep truths of god to go into real intercession and then you are interceding for revelation of the knowledge of truth to come into that church that's what you have to do as a leader number four revival and renewal revival and renewal if the church has stayed cold for a long time revival of our vision the revival of our faith revival of great possibilities in the church and renewal to come to the spiritual lives of the people that we're leading that's why we intercede we're interceding and we're praying making supplication because of revival and renewal number five recovery and redemption recovery and redemption many people are sick if you find in your church many pregnant women at the time they are to deliver we hear this one has died another one was with us the other week but now the said he has died and you find death is taking key key people important people away from your congregation taking important people away from the fellowship of the people of god what are you to do i would just to say the devil is wicked this world is wicked we don't know what is happening to us now the rate of death we see now in this assembly in this fellowship in this church we cannot even count anymore it's terrible that's not what you do is to take it to the lord in prayer and intercede for that church for recovery as well as for redemption to be redeemed from the bondage 
and to be redeemed from the yoke and for the anointing to come in its power and its fullness into that church and to break the yoke and to destroy the works of the devil you pray you intercede you make supplication for recovery the people that are sick many many times you know they have been sick you, you know maybe last year you had so and so was sick and now about nine months have passed or about uh, one year has passed i about so and so now of course he's still sick i about the other fellow is still sick then it's a challenge that we who are in the leadership in that assembly in the leadership in that congregation you take the needs of those people to the lord for recovery and for redemption number six for the reign of righteousness in the land the reign of righteousness you see we talk about our country and the newspapers just write that you know our country is corrupt that other country is corrupt and then they begin to put the number number one the fourth the most corrupt country in the world they write the name and the next corrupt country in the world they write the name and before they write too many names they bring the name of our country and some people even say we're the second most corrupt country in the world but it's not just something to write about it's not just something to talk about it's not just something to gossip about it's not something to criticize the government about it's for the leaders of the land to go to the lodge in prayer in intercession and then to pray for the reign of righteousness and as we are here we can make a difference if you become a Daniel, you become a Daniel, you become an interceding Daniel, you become an interceding Moses, you become an interceding Mary, you become an interceding Esther. We can all intercede, men and women, and we can bring a country back from the verge of destruction. And we can bring back a reign of righteousness in our country in Jesus' name. Amen. Number seven, why are we interceding? Number one is for restoration. Number two is for regeneration. Number three is for revelation. Number four is for revival and renewal. Number five is for recovery and redemption. Number six is for the reign of righteousness. Number seven is readiness for the rapture. Readiness for the rapture. We know that the Lord will come anytime. And then as we see the church sleeping, as we see the church slumbering, as we see the church callous, as we see the church careless, as we see the church as it was in the days of Noah, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, and they were trading, buying and selling until the flood came and took them all away. So shall it be at the time of the coming of the Lord. And we know that at this coming of the Lord, at the time when it is very near, look up, your redemption draws near. We find many people sleeping, and we find many people slumbering and we find many people their concentration is on what shall we eat and what shall we drink wherewithal shall we be clothed trading and buying and selling and marrying and giving in marriage and getting healed and getting de delivered and traveling and this and that then it is for the leadership of the church to go to the lord in prayer and say that we're interceding we're praying so that the people of god will be ready for the rapture and i pray we'll be ready I said we will be ready. Yeah. We're going to rise up now. What we have been talking about, we're going to do. The Lord wants us to have integrity and transparency. He wants us to have influence and trust. He wants us to have intercession and travail. We're going to go before the Lord and we're going to tell the Lord, O oh Lord, here we are. We want you, O oh Lord, to come and do what you want to do in our midst. You raise up your voice to the Lord in prayer. Raise up your voice to the Lord in prayer. We need integrity. We need integrity. And we need transparency in our lives. That the Lord himself, in his mighty power, will come and do within us what he wants to do. So that we'll become the leaders that we ought to be. Indispensable qualities in leadership we ought to have. Present yourself before the Lord. You are a leader over those people that God has set you over. You are a leader over them. You need indispensable qualities in your life. Integrity. How honest are you? You can tell the Lord as you discover this honesty in your life. And you can tell the Lord, oh Lord, I need honesty. I need transparency truthfulness being truthful in everything anything that you do trustworthiness that you are telling the lord oh lord make me trustworthy 
let me live in such a way I even trust myself. And then people can trust me. Single-mindedness. A man of one goal. A man of one direction. A man of one pursuit. A single-minded man. A single-minded woman. A man or a woman with high principles of Christ. Christ-like principles. A focused man. A single-minded man. A dedicated man. A man with faithfulness. A faithful man. A faithful woman. Faithful in all things. Faithful at all times. Innocent. Innocent from wickedness. Innocent from evil. Innocent from the sins of presumption. Transparent. Pray that the Lord will help you. And you will live a transparent life. Your leadership will be transparent. Nothing to hide. Tell the Lord to give you the grace. To wash you and to cleanse you. Of the washing of water by the word. And with the blood of Jesus Christ. To wash all hidden impurity. Away from your life. Pray that the Lord will make you a leader of influence. You will be an inspiration to people, an inspiration to the children, an inspiration to the youth, the teenagers, an inspiration to the men and the women, the adults, an inspiration to the people all around you. Pray that the Lord will help you to be a man of influence, a man of influence, a woman of influence inspiring people around you pray that the lord will help you to intelligently network with people intelligently network with people to connect with people that will help the ministry of the world to move forward pray that the lord will shift your attention away from problems and now you will focus on progress that the Lord will help you shift your attention away from problem and focus your attention on progress that the Lord will help you to lead people to their full potential that the Lord will energize you give you divine ability to use your privileges profitably. Use your resources profitably. Say, Lord, here I am. I want to make a definite mark in my generation. A man of influence. A man of great possibilities. That the Lord will help you to make use of the talent he has given you. The gifts he has given you. The ability he has given you. The resources he has given you. The wisdom he has given you. The privilege of ministry he has given you. That the Lord will help you to make use of that profitably. You will be a prophet to the kingdom of God. And the Lord will help you to empathize with people. Be considerate of people. Touch the lives of people. And the Lord will give you the vision, the insight to negotiate for profit and to connect people with possibilities in their lives. That this conference will help you to move ahead and move forward that will exceed your past performances tell the lord to raise you up as an intercessor christian leadership must intercede and their backsliders you know intercede for them for their restoration 
and there are people that you know are hiding sinners intercede for them for the regeneration is the church standing still intercede that revelation will come to your church the revelation of the fullness of the provision of Calvary intercede there will be revival there will be renewal intercede there will be recovery and redemption recovery for the people that are sick redemption for the people that are bound that the Lord will raise them up open their cage release them intercede for people in captivity and people in sickness intercede for the reign of righteousness intercede for the reign of righteousness that righteousness will reign in our land intercede that the people of God will be ready for the rapture ready for the rapture ready for the return of the Lord pray that God will help you to be a leader of integrity a leader of influence a leader 